This presentation in financial markets and institutions provides a basic description of derivatives and hedging. It also shows some examples of trades and transactions. Um, so continuing um, to start off, I should say, I provide a general description of what a derivatives uh, instrument is, which is uh, it's a financial contract that um, uh, derives its value from the price of some underlying asset. Some of these are shown here. And then down here, I present some examples of derivatives. They include forward contracts, futures, options, interest rate swaps, and the variety of credit derivatives. A couple of these are explained in this presentation. Now though, um, I begin by explaining that derivatives are typically used to reduce or eliminate risk and so they are an important um, instrument in risk management. You can take on a long position or a short position. A long position is one where you accept the position of buying the underlying assets at much, uh, when it's um, time to deliver it. Short position, you are selling the on you 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 agree to sell the underlying asset at some point in the future. Typically, if you have a long position, you're bullish because you expect the price of the underlying asset to rise in the future, and that's why you are taking on a long position to lock in the price right now so that in the future if the price goes up you make a, a killing conversely um, a short position presupposes uh, that you are bearish you expect the price of the underlying asset to fall in the future and as a result you um, locking in a price today to sell it but these are general um, indications. Uh, more specific indications would depend on uh, what particular derivative we're talking about. So now let's begin with a forward contract, which is a binding agreement between two parties, a buyer and a seller, to buy or sell the underlying assets at a preset time in the future and at a price agreed upon today. So in this definition, there are three important uh, aspects. One is some underlying assets has to be defined. For example, crude oil. Two is the time at which the delivery of that underlying asset will be made in the future is also specified today. Say for example, two months in the future. And thirdly, the price that would have to be paid when the asset exchanges hands is also predefined in the contract. And so all three indicators must be in place for a forward contract, which is a binding agreement to be effectuated. So what I've done here is to show an illustration of uh, a forward contract. So you have a buyer. So this guy has the long position and you have a seller. This guy has a short position. So on December 12, these two individuals agree in a forward contract for this buyer, Mr. A, to pay $500 per ounce of gold. And so the, Mr. B is going to be delivering this gold to receive $500 per ounce. The uh, date at which payment and delivery will take place is December 15th. So as you can see, those three elements are in place. One is the underlying asset, namely gold. Two is the price at which the assets will change hands, $500 per ounce. And three is the time in the future that the exchange will take place, December 15th in this case. So come December 15th, Mr. A will pay Mr. B $500 per ounce to take delivery of this gold, which in this example is uh, 1,000 ounces of gold. So $500 per ounce times uh, 1,000 uh, ounces, that's uh, 500,000 bucks, half a million. So now, um, 
here is a basic example of interest rate forward contract between a bank and an insurance company whereby a bank agrees to sell $10 million face value bond to yield 4%. Now these are going to be treasury bonds with maturity in 2030. So since the bank is selling bond, selling bond forward contracts, this is a short position. Contract maturity is one year. So the futures or the forward contract maturity here is one year. So the insurance company that's um, buying that has the long position will be paying the 10 million bucks. Now payment and delivery will take place one year from today and the amount paid will be such that the yield to maturity on the instrument would be 4%. So now futures contract is very much like forward contract because it is also a binding agreement between two parties to buy or sell the underlying assets at a future date and at a pre-specified price. So I know what you're what you're asking what well, then why do we call one forward and the other futures to be quite honest with you a futures contract is a special case of a forward contract the reason is in a forward contract it is customized between the two parties so they can choose whatever way that they wish to um, exchange the underlying asset futures contract is standardized for example, if you want to buy crude oil futures, you're going to have to buy, buy it in multiples of a thousand barrels because one futures contract in crude oil calls for the, for the delivery of a thousand barrels of crude oil. One British pound uh, futures contract calls for the delivery of, uh, of uh, British pound sterling worth, I believe, 62,500. For euro, it's 125,000. But if it's a forward contract, it's just between the two parties. They can decide what quantity and what time of delivery. The futures, you have specified time of, de of delivery, and you have also the uh, <clears throat> specific grade of the underlying asset that must be delivered. For crude oil, for example, it's got to be light, sweet crude. It cannot be heavy crude, and it can't be any of the other varieties. Also, in a forward contract, no initial payment is required. Futures contract requires that you put down an initial margin. It's a performance bond that you're going to have to put down to show good faith toward the, toward the performance of the contract. Futures in a forward contract, no physical trading facilities. It's a one-on-one -on -one transaction. Futures, as I mentioned earlier, is exchange traded, such as New York uh, Futures Exchange, uh, Chicago, Mercantile Exchange, Chicago Board of Trade. So futures contracts are exchange traded, not so with forward. Forward contracts are settled only at maturity. Futures is, requires daily settlement. So each day the contract is marked to market and gains and losses are recorded. And finally, a forward contract is unregulated and so there is a high counterparty risk. But a futures contract is regulated and guaranteed by the exchange or by some um, clearing commission. So no fear of uh, defaults of the counterparty in the case of the futures contract. Otherwise, these two uh, derivatives amount to essentially the same thing. It's a binding agreement between two parties whereby the one party with the long position will buy the underlying assets paying the pre-specified price and at the pre-specified time in the future. So in a futures contract, because contracts are standardized, uh, you would have to construct a hedge ratio to match your spot position, which is your underlying assets that you, ch that you have, that you'd like to sell futures on, and the contract price. For example, let's say that you wish to um, uh, sell pound sterling futures. As I mentioned earlier, one contract has a size of 62,500 pounds. Let's say that right now, one of the futures price for British, British pound sterling expressed in direct quotes is 
6.168 cents. This means that the contract price, even though this is the price you see in the futures market, the contract price is going to be the product of these two numbers. The contract size multiplied by the futures price per unit. So you can look at this as a unit price. So this is actually the price per contract. And I show you the calculation right here. So now, suppose you have 10 million pounds that you wish to hedge. And let's say that right now, though, in the spot market, one British pound sterling costs $1.52. That means right now that the current value of this your inventory of 10 million pounds would be $15.2 million. So that's your inventory in dollars amount to this amount. So now, no pun intended there. So now, how many contracts? British pound futures contract should you sell to fully hedge this year 10 million pound sterling? Answer about 150 contracts, which is as I show you right here the spot value divided by the futures contract price. So that's it right here. The value of your underlying asset is 15.2 million. The price of one futures contract is 101,050, which is calculated right here. So that gives you approximately 150 contracts. You cannot buy and sell fractional contracts, so you're going to have to round up or round down. In this case, I rounded down to 150. So the same applies to these other instruments on which futures contracts are traded.